Hey FRT community, respiratory coach here with you. I got another video for you. You can tell in my voice here, I'm a little under the weather right now, but I still just felt like I needed to get a video out for you guys. There hasn't been one out in a while. And so i um, just here working for you, okay? So here's what I wanna tell you. You're gonna wanna watch to the end of this video because at the end of this video, I have a special offer for you, okay? So be sure and stick around to the end and I hope in the meantime you learn something because what we're going to talk about today is the first of a three-part series where we're talking about oxygenation status and how not all oxygenation statuses are the same. And so if you look on the board that I have right here, you'll see where I have two different patient scenarios. I have a patient with a PaO2 of 80, an FiO2 of 80, a PEEP of 5. And then patient number two has a PO2 of 80, an FiO2 of 40, and a PEEP of 12. Now my point here is, is that if you were to ask yourself, are these two patients from an oxygenation standpoint, are they equivalent? Then obviously the answer is no. That's why I'm doing a video, right? Um, but even on a, on, a, on a greater scale than that, the answer is still no. And I'm going to show you why in this video, okay? So here we go. The importance here is understanding that just because your PaO2 is normal does not mean that you have um, adequate or, or good oxygenation or that you're oxygenating in the most efficient way. That's probably the underlying tone in all of this, okay? So let's jump into it. The first thing we're gonna notice here is that we're gonna have a variance in our PF ratio. Okay, so if we take patient number one and we do 80 divided by 0.8. Now I'm going to do it on a calculator, but we don't even have to have a calculator for this because we know if we do 80 divided by 0.8, that's going to be 100. Anytime your PaO2 matches your FiO2, your PF ratio is equal to 100. Okay, so this PF ratio is 100. Now we know that we like in our sick pit populations, we know that um, acute lung injury would be defined as a PF ratio between two and 300. Anything greater than 300 is, is, is really good. Okay. So rarely will you have, um, unless you have a, per like let's say a 21 year old uh, drug overdose patient comes in, they'll probably have a PF ratio greater than 300. But your ARDS patients, your pneumonia patients, your, your, your pulmonary patients are probably not going to have PF ratios greater than 300, even though that's what we like to see, okay? But a PF ratio of 260 or 270 or 250 in a sick patient is better than a PF ratio of 100. This is not a good PF ratio. When we look at um, patient number two, we see that we have a PaO2 of 80 and we divide it by 0.4 and we have a PF ratio of 200. Now, still not a good PF ratio, but it's twice as good as this patient's, right? So that's the first thing I wanna notice is that when you're talking about a PF ratio, you divide your P little AO2 by your FiO2 and you'll get your PF ratio. This is going to be an indicator of how efficient that FiO2 is working to achieve that PaO2. So here we see that your PaO2 is 80 and FiO2 of 80% is achieving the PaO2 of 80, but with a PF ratio of 100 versus 200, this FiO2 of 40 is obviously operating more efficiently. And of course, that's due to other settings, and we'll talk about that as we get into the future parts of this series, okay? So for right now, our PF ratio is 100 to 200. Now the next thing we're gonna do is make you think real hard back to either when you were in school or if you've forgotten this, maybe you're about to graduate and you've forgotten this because it was probably in your first or second semester and, and you've forgotten about this right here. This is the P, big A, the A to A difference. This is where you subtract alveolar partial pressure of oxygen from your arterial partial pressure of oxygen and you see how much of that oxygen in the alveoli is actually transferring over into the arterial blood and so to do this we have to do the alveolar air equation now if you remember this equation it looks something like this barometric pressure which i'm just going to use 760 minus water vapor pressure 47 
times your FiO2. And then we have to subtract out CO2 divided by our respiratory quotient. So you're going to divide that by 0.8. Or if you don't like dividing, you can multiply it times 1.25. They will give you the same answer. So I'm just going to multiply times 1.25. Okay. Now we are at a, a starting point here where we can calculate our arterial oxygenation. Okay. So if we take patient number one, we're going to take this FiO2 here and we're going to plug in 80. We're just going to say for the CO2 purpose that we have a normal CO2 of 40. Okay. So this is going to give us um, 760 minus 47 is 713 times 0.8 is 570. And then we're going to minus 40 times 1.25 is 50. And we see that we have a P big A O2 that equals 520. Okay, so I'm going to put that up here. Um, let's just put it, um, I'm going to erase this right here. So we'll just say P big A O2 equals 520. Okay, now if we do the same thing for patient number two, instead of 80 here, we'll plug in 40 and we're going to keep our CO2 40. These patients are the exact same. Okay, so we're going to do 760 minus 47 is 713, 713 times 0.4 is 285, remember this equaled 50, and we see here we're now at 235. So our PaO2 up here equals 235. Now bear with me because this is all going to start coming together, okay? The first thing you should notice when you look at this, okay, is that both of these patients have a P little a O2 of 80, so they're equivalent at the arterial level. But look what's different at the alveolar level. You are having to put in 520 uh, millimeters of mercury of oxygen, partial pressure of oxygen of 520 inside the alveoli to achieve this arterial oxygenation of 80. Over here, we only have to put in 235 to get 80. Now, if we do our A to A difference, Then we'll get 520 minus 80 equals 440. And when we look over here, we do 235 minus 80 equals 155. Okay, now I'm going to illustrate this in a drawing here in just a second. Okay, but I just want you to see what's happening here. Of the 520 that's going into the alveoli, only 80 is crossing over into the arterial blood, which means 440 is left behind in the alveoli. As opposed to over here, 235 is going into the alveoli, partial pressure of oxygen, and 155 is being left behind. 80 of it is crossing over into the arterial blood. Now this is important. This is what you have to understand. This concept right here, okay? Because if I was to ask you, how do you increase P little a O2. If you have a patient who is hypoxemic, their P little a O2 is below normal, how would you increase it? And a lot of you would say one way we can do it is by increasing FiO2, right? Well, if we increase FiO2, we know that that increases PaO2. But there's a spot in here that you have got to understand. You've got to understand how increasing FiO2 increases PaO2, okay? And the answer to this question is simply this. Increasing FiO2 increases alveolar partial pressure of oxygen, which increases arterial partial pressure of oxygen. That's how that works together, okay? We know this as being Dalton's Law of partial pressures. Now we're going to talk about that more in series two. But for now, I want you to understand these, this train of thought right here. And this is obvious right here. Patient one, we increased alveolar 
oxygen, therefore we increased arterial oxygen. Over here we increased alveolar oxygen to 235 and we increased arterial oxygen to 80. But why did it take so much less on patient number two than patient number one? Okay, they're clearly not the same. So why did it take less? The answer is in our PEEP values. Okay, so two things to understand about oxygenation. Kind of an insight into part two of this series. Dalton's law says if we increase the partial pressure of alveolar oxygen, we will increase the partial pressure of arterial oxygen. We do so by increasing FiO2. Okay, Fick's law states that if we can increase the surface area and decrease the AC membrane thickness, then we will also improve the diffusion of gas across the permeable me membrane. And that's what we see over here. The patient with a PEEP of 12 is obviously operating more efficiently than a PEEP of 5. It's requiring half the amount of FiO2. We have a PF ratio that is twice as good. We have an A to A difference that is significantly less. Now, what's the, what's the significance of this A to A difference? Well, we know that nitrogen remains in the alveoli to help us prevent atelectasis. If we start flooding the alveoli with a bunch of, arterial, a bunch of oxygen that does not cross over into the arterial blood, then we lose and we get this, washogen nitro this, this nitrogen washout and it could lead to unnecessary cases of atelectasis. Okay, so you need to understand that. This is why this is important. Okay, now let me put, it, let me put this into illustration form for you. Okay, um, I'm going to erase this bottom part here and I'm going to reorganize this right here. So PF ratio was 100. PaO2 was 520, A to A difference was 440. Okay, up here, PF ratio was 200, PaO2 was 235, A to A difference is 155. I'm going to draw two sets of lungs here. Okay, so we have two sets of lungs, okay? Now, where we start is with the FiO2. So how much FiO2 is going in? So coming in here is 0.8 or slash 80%, okay? That 80% is resulting in an alveolar pressure of 520, okay? Now, we know that we have arterial blood coming by these in the pulmonary capillaries and this 520 is resulting in 80 getting into the arterial blood. When this 520 transition over to 80 we have 440, I'm going to put it over here, we have 440 that's left behind extremely inefficient oxygenation method here, right? You're putting in a lot of oxygen to just get a little bit of oxygen into the arterial circulation. Not ideal, okay? Now when we look over here, we see that we're putting in FiO2 of 40, also for, known as 40%. That means that our alveolar PaO2 is 235. That transitions and crosses over for a PaO2 of 80. This is PaO2. Okay? We leave behind 155 left behind. Now, what's the point? Okay, Joe, who cares? Well, who cares is this. You have to understand that if your PF ratio, the higher your PF ratio is, okay, the smaller your A to A difference will be. What it is telling you is that your FiO2 is operating efficiently or not efficiently. A poor PF ratio tells you that for the FiO2 you're using, your oxygen efficiency of your oxygenation is not very good, which means you're leaving a lot left behind in the alveoli. So low PF ratio equals 
increased A to A difference, and we know that's not good. A better PF ratio results, results in a smaller A to A difference, okay? And that's the key here, guys. Understanding that just because your PaO2 is normal does not mean you're, 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 you're oxygenating your patient efficiently. There's probably better ways to do it, okay? So you have to understand this concept here to understand that patient number two is being oxygenated much more efficiently, okay? Now, I hope you like this video. I hope it makes sense to you from a basic oxygenation standpoint. Just don't throw four or five liters nasal cannula on a patient and go, huh, oxygenating my patient, everything is grand. No, you gotta think deeper on it. You gotta think down to the smaller details. That's what makes you a respiratory therapist. Anybody can put a patient on, on a five liter nasal cannula. Not everybody can tell you that it's Dalton's law that says increasing FiO2 increases alveolar partial pressure of oxygen, which is why you see an improvement in arterial oxygenation. And that's why you're becoming a respiratory therapist, because you want to know those, those, those things. You want to know those details. Okay, now here's the offer I told you about at the beginning of the video. Within the next 24 hours, Everybody who watches this video and puts a comment in the comments below with a specific question related to respiratory therapy. At the end of 24 hours, I am going to take everybody who put a comment with a specific question. I'm going to randomly draw five names and next Wednesday, those five people are going to be invited to join a private Zoom meeting with me for me to answer your questions in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Okay? That's the offer. Get your comments with your questions down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I hope you look forward to part two of this series, followed up by part three, coming out very, very soon. Best wishes, guys.